Yes. Good morning. Uh, this is Rachel and Fabian talking about proof of concepts, how to build things, break them down, build some more things, and the likes. So if you're in the GEO team, have fun listening to us rambling for uh, some time. For no more than 40 minutes, because then I have a one-on-one. -on -one. Yes, uh, and I need to go to the market. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, so my, my observation was, and I, I, I kind of wanted to hear your opinion on it. Um, when we start new things, right, um, actually new functionalities or bits of work that are relatively complex, I think usually this starts with a, a discussion about the problem and why we want to fix it, if everybody understands and agrees what the use cases are, um, sort of surfacing all the context of you know, why we want to do this. Um, and I think what has happened in the past, as far as I can tell, is then you, you kind of like have that in a discussion and an issue, and then you just start building it. Um, I think we've made some good progress by then focusing on really breaking those larger items down, like the design repositories or whatever they may be. And we actually had a discussion yesterday in the product meeting on like using epics and splitting those into smaller pieces. And I, I fully agree that. But something that also has happened, I think recently is that what we're trying to do, I don't know if it's, if it's hard enough or abstract enough um, that um, there were suggestions of like, okay, before we actually are able to, I think, break this down, we need to make some decisions on like what we want to do. And in order to get a feeling for how th this can even look like, let's do a small POC, proof of concept. And so my, my, uh, my question is, um, what do you think? Is that a good pattern? Is, what are the advantages? What are the disadvantages? Um... That is a good question. So I think that I really like the way that we work with ep with epics and issues and the way that we start from understanding what the actual use cases are. And having that discussion at the beginning is really good to provide the context for everyone because it makes sure that we're all on the same page and we're not going to go off and build the wrong thing or the thing that doesn't actually meet the need. I think that there are some times where the technical solution is easily understood enough that we can just jump in. We can start creating the issues because we know from a technical perspective how to solve this. Either we've done it before, we've seen something similar, or we're just so confident that we know what we're going to do. But I think in some cases, the technical route forward isn't as clear. And I think the example that you posted about the maintenance mode and, and how to get into read into a read-only state is one of those things because there are probably a couple of different ways that we could achieve this and we could get all in the theory about it and say from a theoretical perspective we need to choose this route because that's going to get us in, in these directions and then making a choice based on theory but what i really like is having small proof of concepts that are built because then the discussion becomes much more concrete and sometimes a proof of concept you, sometimes you only have to spend a day on the proof of concept to realize that this is absolutely not feasible. And then at yes. least it saved all that work of breaking down the issues along this technical path when it turns out the technical path is false. Um, but I do think that one of the risks that comes with the proof of concepts is that proof of concepts can just expand and expand and get more complicated and take up more and more time. When in actual fact, the proof of concept doesn't have to extend like that. And one of the things that I think we need to introduce if we're going to be doing more proof of concepts is that the proof of concept needs to have a goal. So the goal of the self-service proof of concept is to show X and the goal of the um, this maintenance mode read-only state is to prove Y. And those those proving statements, I think, need to be included in a specific issue that is cr like create the POC so that when the person who's who's working on it has met those conditions, we stop. And yeah. it may even be that we need to impose some kind of time limit on it as well, because mm -hmm. yes, there are going to be some technical solutions that, um, you know, we could really just hit our head against a wall for five days, 14 days, like, like it, it could just extend. And 
at some point we actually need to take a step back and stop and go, maybe this is not the right direction. Um, yeah, because I caveats I think I put on I I I think are important with with POCs. Yeah, I I kind of I agree with that. And actually, in in the sort of product development workflow, there is the solution validation phase. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, um, I think this is phrased a lot around um, UX creates a prototype, low or high fidelity, whatever. But I think in our case, the like the prototype right is is sometimes not something that contains a, a it's user not interface. Visual. It's not yeah. visual. And it, it's, more, it's more exactly this, like a proof of concept that this is kind of how this could look like, right? And then it needs some, some form of validation saying like, yes, this is actually, like we have a potential solution to this. Let's move forward. Um, yeah, so, so I think that what should happen is, is um, in an epic like the maintenance mode one, there should be an issue created. Like if we decide that we need to go down the proof of concept route, we create an issue that says, create a proof of concept to investigate the solution. And the, and the, um, the output of the proof of concepts needs to address these states or the goal is, the goal is this. Yeah. And at least, and that's trackable through the boards. And once it's completed from a technical perspective, we have a great understanding of what we need to do. And then, uh, it's much easier to work together to break that down into pieces. Exactly, because I, I think, I think maybe the way forward here is to, you know, like if if somebody like Mike, who is technically very knowledgeable, right, suggests like, okay, let's take a step back. Like, I kind of need to like get my like head like my hands in here and do something, or like another engineer. Um, if there's sort of a notion of doing it, because this is. For me, um, as a PM, sometimes something sounds very simple, like some, some sounds very simple, right? but it's actually quite hard, right? And so I think this is maybe also a discussion that, that we need to have together in order to say like, yes, let's do that. Um, and then when we, when we do, I think time boxing it is really important because I think what I would like to avoid is you say, oh, we'll do a POC. And then a month later, we, we still have no decision. It's unclear, right? And it kind of sprawled. And then it's a, a big MR or a big couple of MRs where it's unclear where to go or if they will ever be merged. And so maybe what we do with proof of concepts then is, um, I mean, there is the concept of a due date on the issue. And maybe what we do is when the proof of concept gets scheduled, or sorry, before the proof of concept is even scheduled, we determine what, like how much time we think should be allocated into it. And we put due dates on the proof of concept and the day following a due date or the day of a due date is when there's a discussion that happens in the channel or on the issue about what has been found. So the expectation is if you have a proof of concept on the date on the issue, you'll provide your feedback and a summary so that yes. the discussion can continue. And that way it's, it's, it's time boxed, but people still have the flexibility to fit the POC in around the other work that they may have or the reviews that they may be doing and, yeah. and things like that. But then also you have um, y your expectations are managed in terms of when you will get feedback about this issue. Cause that's the main, I mean, that's, it's one of the main reasons for the POC is, is that we can give you good feedback as to what is actually required in order to achieve this. Yeah. And I think the other, the other risk I see is, if folks think that, um, oh, we need a POC and the POC will take a month, right? Or like, it's very complex. That's also maybe an indication that the thing is too large, right? I think the, the other thing that I would like to avoid is we, we should do the minimal viable thing to move forward right? and break it down as such. So also for, from a POC perspective, it doesn't need to tackle everything, right? It just needs to tackle just enough, right, to validate that we can we can do sort of a minimal iteration forward and what that would mean, right? And sometimes the minimal iteration is still five MRs, right, um, in five different issues, and it's a sizable chunk of work. Sometimes maybe it's 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 less. Um, but I think that's sort of the other risk I see um, is that you know. This lends itself to sort of blowing up in scope. 
right? And well, th well, that's why I'm trying to limit it by saying we declare up front what the goals of the POC are, yes. because that way it becomes very clear that the scope needs to be limited and it focuses people on the goals rather than, you know, the technical possibilities of cool, of cool functionality X. It's, it's, uh, it's trying to encourage, um, what's the right word? It's not limitation, but it's um, constraint. It's like constraint. using constraint to try <coughs> and focus people. Yeah. And if we, if we do a concrete example in the maintenance mode, for example, I think the, the main thing that people see here needs to, to validate is, for example, at what level we should block write operations, right? So you could say the POC should validate that we can do achieve this by like, and there is a suggestion refactoring sort of the, the middleware, right? And if that is a, a valid path forward, we can say like, yes, that worked and it worked well, right? Here, here is a functional thing that, that kind of does this. Um, I think we can answer that question. And we don't need to worry about like logging in admins or, or something like that in the POC. I think the validation is more on the, on that specific technical like bit first, I think. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. The, uh, the POC doesn't have to deal with all of the other things. It's just about where is the block supposed to be for marking it read only. And I, I also think that adding a read only flag in like omnibus that's not I don't know, correct me if i'm wrong i think that is like adding the flag itself is not difficult right if the question is like what does that flag then actually do right and how does that work that is difficult right so um yeah i think it's um i don't i don't want to introduce pocs for every small piece of what no, needs exactly. to be accomplished it needs to be for the stuff where we're just completely not sure about how this is going to work or what this is going to look like um and i think yeah i think for this one specifically it's about what level does that block go in um yeah so i think yeah. i mean so i think to summarize what we've been talking about um when some when an epic is in the solution validation phase we create and we determine that a proof of concept is necessary, then there's an issue created that is the proof of concept. Mm -hmm. And yes. we discuss with either the Epic owner or someone else uh, who is uh, interested in that area yeah. about how much time is, a, is appropriate for the proof of concept. But ideally we, we time box them to like a week at a time. Yeah. I think so longer, that, longer than a week is often like I would say is an indication that something is already wrong. Right? Yeah. Um, and so we, we create the issue and put it in for scheduling. And when it goes into development, we set the, we set the time period of five working days or whatever that is. And then the expectation is at the due date, people will fill in some kind of comments um, that shows what they've been able to determine. Mm -hmm. And then you're able to, to move forward from that. Yeah. So shall I write a handbook entry that is this? I think because that's I think that's the best way of um, can communicating this. it out. Yeah, I, I like that idea. And I think that also enhances our sort of workflow in that regard, because I think that sort of that step was missing before. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I think it should be like, it shouldn't be necessary in all instances, but it may be necessary in some. Um, and I think it should also, I think for me, the important thing is, and I think there was a little bit discussion on uh, the POC for the framework idea that it's like, I don't mind if the POC gets thrown out. And right? it's like nothing needs to be mergeable at some point. It is for validation purposes. And after that, you know, you can say like, okay, actually you need to do these five or 10 things for which we can then raise very incremental iterative issues and move them through. Um, no, I completely but, agree with that. Like the proof of concept needs to be the smallest thing that can be done to prove what, like to, to, to prove the goals of the proof yes. of the proof of concept. Um, you know, that might even mean creating enti an entirely different tiny little project that proves something that is technically possible. Yeah. Like, and the, the form that it takes is, yeah, it, it, it can really be anything. And the intention is never to 
expect that we can take it as is into the pro the project. Like I, I'm expecting that there might be more iterations to make it ex like acceptable into the into the the, the code base. Yeah, and I um, I uh, like I still remember there was an example in a in a product book that I read like a little while ago on the notion that proofs of concept or things need to be complicated. And that it was the example of like VR enabled glasses. And essentially they wanted to know, okay, can people actually wear that? And it was just made out of like cardboard with some weight on it. And just by that people learned, it's like, you will never want to actually wear anything like this for longer than 10 minutes if it is heavier than, than X. And it took like 15 minutes to do. And obviously you're going to throw it away. Right, but it was enough to to ve to validate what you're. <laughs> I really like that as an example of proof of concept. Yeah. Right, and I think this is what I'm looking for here, um, when when we're doing proof of concepts. Right, this is like this is act like we have a technical, a technically feasible solution to this that we can that we can do, and um, then we can talk about all the details. But um, I think the this is also maybe the last thing I'm going to say is. If we can't actually succeed with a proof of concept and we have no viable technical solution, we can abort, right? And we can say like, this is a problem that we need to solve. Uh, eventually there is a need for this problem to be solved, but at the moment we have no like acceptable, like technical path <clears throat> that allows us to do that, you know, in some, in some way that we feel is appropriate to address this problem, right? If, if the like only solution is to walk away for six months and, and solve it, you know, the priority order shifts. Right? And, I think, and I think that that's something I will put in the handbook entry as well, is that <clears throat> some proof of concepts will fail and that is fine. Yes. The expectation is to not try and smash it together until it works. Like some of them will just not be successful and that's okay. Yeah. And I think that's also something we can communicate in the issue and say, we looked at this, we did this POC, and at the moment, like we determined that that is not the thing we can, we can do at this moment in time. So it goes back to the backlog and we'll revisit that at some point. So, super, I think that was, so that's a great addition. I will raise the POC issue on the maintenance mode. Um, I will raise the MR for the handbook change. And, um, and upload this video. Perfect. Awesome, cool. yeah, thanks, thanks Fabian. Bye. Bye.